think a lot of thinking has gone into some of the main sorts of issues that we've been wrestling with about uh, matching psychosocial disability uh, into the new model of the NDIS. But there really is a lot of work that's still to be done. We're still wrestling with some of the very same questions that we were wrestling with 12 months ago about eligibility, about assessment and about continuity of services. So we're creeping forward. Uh, I think it's a very big and complicated issue, so it's not unsurprising that we're making slow progress, but I, I think it's slow progress is how, I, how I'd report it. Look, I think the biggest challenge we have is how we actually look after people who are not going to come into the NDIS but who nonetheless will continue to need services. So we know a little bit about what might happen in Tier 3. We know almost nothing about what might happen in Tier 2 and what sorts of services and programs people might get. Uh, and that means we're not yet ready to make the sorts of decisions that we really need to be making about programs like personal helpers and mentors, partners in recovery, those other sorts of programs that are offering services to people who won't end up as part of the NDIS. There are really a huge number of reforms at the moment that are affecting the mental health sector. So we have the McClure Review of Welfare, we have the Federation White Paper process that's looking at Commonwealth state relations, which is really picks up mental health issues right at the, at the forefront. Uh, we've had the Commission of Audit, we've had uh, the National Mental Health Commission's review of services and programs, which is looking at the whole of mental health. So there really are a lot of reviews and processes all at play at once and I think again I think that really makes it a very difficult and complex challenge to ensure that people aren't left falling through the cracks as these services and programs shift around. Yeah.